Hi everybody, welcome back to What's the Coop? I'm Molly Brown with Cornell Cooperative Extension. I'm a 4-H youth ed educator and I'm your official chicken lady. I am here in our second video series. Now that you've decided chickens are right for you, what do I do with my chickens? Here we go. All right, so we've decided, yes, I'm gonna be an official chicken person. Now what do I do? Did you get your chicks from either your local tractor store or did you get them from a hatchery and have them mailed to you or did you incubate them yourself? Either way, you now have one day old chickens. Woohoo! This is so exciting. I have went, gone back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Should I get some baby chicks for this video series? And I gotta tell you, I decided not to. My baby chicks that I have are about six weeks old and it just wasn't right for our life and technically for the baby chicks that I would be getting to get new baby chicks and introduce them into much older chicks. So this is my first lesson for you. Make sure whatever you're wanting to get, you make the decision to do it all at once. Okay, so it's very unhealthy. You, have, you run a risk of your chicks getting beat up on or pecked on or something along those lines if you go ahead and incorporate chicks into your flock at different times. Of course, there's gonna be a natural pecking order, but if you can avoid it by getting all of your chicks at the same time, you can eliminate a lot of heartache on your end and on the baby chicks end. So I didn't go ahead and get any baby chicks. However, I've got all the baby chick knowledge and all the baby chick supplies to go over with you to make sure you're ready and rearing for baby chicks. Okay, so Molly, I got my baby chicks. Now what do I do? Okay, let me tell you. You make sure you have your brooder set up. This is our brooder. We love this brooder and it works really well for us. We've been using it for six years. It's a 110 gallon feed trough and it's rubber and it's awesome. So when you get your brooder set up, make sure you have your heat source lit well in advance and we'll get to that in just two seconds. But first I wanna talk water with you. I am a huge fan of these guys. So have your water set up with electrolytes or probiotics for your baby chicks. This is our water feeder that we use for our baby chicks. It's easy, it twists and turns, and it just goes straight in. So you turn it off, fill it up, pour your probiotics or electrolytes in it, turn it off, and it sits right into your brooder. You're gonna have your chicks in your brooder for about three weeks, okay? So it's something to think about. They're gonna get big, and they're gonna get big really fast. So I have a couple different setups. You can use anything to raise it up. You don't want them kicking all the different shavings and stuff into your water, so you could put it on your plant tray. My nifty handy husband cut me a bunch of different size logs to have them sit on. So that works out really well too. So you've got your water, great. I guess before water, we should have done shavings. I really love cedar shavings. They're nice, you want a cozy, soft, kind of think of like a downy type situation. You want your chicks feeling like they're on a cloud. So I like the cedar shavings. They smell really good, but they're large pieces of shaving. When your baby chicks come, they are so excited. They are ready for the world. They want to grow, they want to explore, and they are the most curious, cute little things you've ever seen in your life. They're going to peck at everything. So the bigger the shavings you have, the less likely they are to try and eat the shavings, and they smell so good anyway. So we have shavings all along. I'm not actually setting up the brooder, so I'm not going to waste all of our really good shavings, but you get the idea. Okay, so we have water, we have shavings, we now have food. So there's food that you can get. You can choose to do medicated or unmedicated chick starter feed. Okay, I go with non-medicated because I have all of my chicks vaccinated when I purchase them. It's important to me, I think it's important. Uh, you can make that choice. I'm not gonna have that conversation with you, but in my opinion, I get the vaccinated chicks, so I don't need medicated chick feed. So we get the regular chick feed. You have this feeder here, it turns, lifts up, and this will last you for a little while. You just wanna make sure it's always fed. The chicks are gonna be starving. They've been on the road, they're hungry, and they want a delicious meal. So we've got our chick feed. Again, when that gets to be, you know, they're larger and they're kicking shavings in it and stuff like that, then you'll wanna lift that up as well until they're out of the brooder. Now, most importantly, we have our heat source. 
baby chicks need to stay at over 100 degrees for the first few hours you get them. They're cold, they've been traveling, they're exhausted. They need some warmth. So here is what we use. We also have this awesome um, screening that we put over it. And you can tell how warm the chicks are by their body actions. If they're really cold, they're gonna be huddled together trying to keep warm with each other's body heat. That's not cool. Warm them up. Now let's say you have it too close and you need to, um, they're all spread out around the edge of your heat source. Then it's too hot and you need to raise up the heat source for them. But you wanna really watch them for the first few hours and make sure that they're thriving, eating, drinking, and taking care of themselves. I did miss one point that I do wanna talk about. When you do get them and your water source is there, you wanna take them and dip their beak each one of them, show them where their water is, dip their beak, that'll give them the energy they need. It's really, really hard on them to travel either from the store to your house or even in the mail. So just make sure they're hydrated. So we have our heat source. It's very, very, very important. I use a red heat lamp. White heat lamps will induce pecking and it's not a natural light and then they don't get to rest. A red heat lamp is way less invasive it's not as hard on them, and it's just a very neutral, easy light to keep them warm, and it keeps them from pecking each other. It keeps them from getting kind of, I don't know what the right word is, but um, just use a red heat lamp. All right, so we've talked heat, we've talked food, we've talked water. Now we have to talk about keeping them healthy. All right, so you're gonna wanna watch them. Some of them might be a little bit lethargic. They might be a little bit um, kind of wobbly on their toes and they're not doing very well. You'll be able to tell the ones that are eating and drinking, those ones are healthy and happy. The ones that might be a little bit wobbly or something like that, isolate them. We have a separate little kind of glad Tupperware type area that's a big, um, a big storage container and we have it set up exactly the same way and that we can isolate the chicks that aren't doing as well so they can gain their strength and not get trampled on. That's really important. The other thing that we want to make sure and look out for is pasty butt. It's kind of nasty, but it's really, really important. Pasty butt would be if they're not cleaning themselves or the poop isn't getting on the floor or something like that and it's building up on their itty bitty cute little tiny fuzzy butts. Um, if this is the case, you wanna get a washcloth. Make sure it's kind of warm, but not gonna burn them, of course, and hold it on there and kind of break it up and just make sure that it's nice and clean in their little rear ends. Are the cutest, cleanest little rear ends ever. This is actually, um, if pasty butt gets really bad on your chicks, it can kill your chicks and nobody wants to see that. So that's my big note for you on that. Keeping your baby chicks healthy. It's a big investment. You, it's a big emotional investment and you don't want to see anything happen to them. So that's our brooder setup. They'll stay in here for about three weeks until they've got a really good set of feathers. We are really fortunate that we have a larger area to move them when they get too big and too crowded in this area. Um, you're going to want to think about that before you get the chicks. Well, here, we have a beautiful April day and it snowed on us, right? So how do you keep your, your water warm? We have heated bases. There's a lot of really awesome, uh, genius farm equipment out there. We use these in all of our coops all winter long. The water just sits right on top of it, keeps the water from defrosting. It's, it works perfectly for us. Uh, we've been using them again for about six years. So we highly recommend the heated base. They have heated waterers, they're more expensive. You just kind of figure out what's best for your lifestyle and your chicks. This is what I have to say. This is where we're at. I really loved you guys reaching out to me all week long with your chick questions. I'm here for you. If I can't find the answer, I have amazing Cornell resources, lots of different resources that I'm happy to share with you. And we'll get through this together. We'll get your chicks happy, healthy, and laying gorgeous eggs. Thank you so much for joining me on week two. I look forward to next week where you can actually meet my baby chicks and we'll learn more 411, what's the coop on chickens? Again, thank you so much, Molly Brown. Bye.